Alright, well, stored in. Alright, wish popping. So, um, we're doing this shit. Um, I'm gonna start answering the questions that everybody was asking me today. Um, okay, let's say, let's say. Okay, yeah, so, um, I don't think I've, like, verbally said this before, but yeah, my name is Gwendolyn Alley. I have two names that I use very versatilely. Um, People who know me from like elementary, middle school, whatever, high school, they call me Gwen. People who met me in college and like now present, they know me as Ali. Um, people that I grew up in like my fa like my family, they call me uh, Wendy. I don't know where the fuck that name came from, but they call me Wendy. Um, also, I'm not taking off this hat because I'm having a bad hair day. Like, no. Okay. So, these questions are, are pretty like juicy feel me um so let's start i'm also at my friend delilah's house i basically live here <laughs> basically <laughs> um she'll be joining me for a part of the vlog to like help me give y'all advice all right because two heads are better than one um first question uh would you like to have a wealthy future with no love or would you want to be born again but this time with all the knowledge you already have um money ain't never been shit to me like i'm not materialistic like that so i would definitely go with the second part of that question um it would be pretty lit to be born again with everything that i know because that would just make me a wiser person and hopefully i don't commit the same mistakes although i know myself too well i would probably fuck up again in life um okay so the second question this one i got asked a lot um am i single yes i'm single um, am I looking for a relationship? I actually am looking for a relationship. Um, I just don't I have really bad trust issues. I don't trust guys that easily like when it comes to them Telling me that they're in love with me or whatever like I just Like crickets is my face expression. Um, I feel like if I meet someone who genuinely like I can tell cares about me then I would be down to like see what's up my life is fucking crazy and it's full-on hectic like i don't always put my life out there like what i show you guys on the vlog like that's that's me when it's like popping whatever when i'm having a good time um but like my real life on a daily basis um kind of sucks uh we'll get more into detail when the few questions whatever all right okay this question i don't know I don't know who the fuck asked me this one, but <laughs> um, if you were at an edge of a cliff with Delilah and Jocelyn and they both fell, who would you save and who would you let fall? That is so mean. Who the fuck? Um, all right, look, Jocelyn is my childhood friend. Like we went to middle school together. We've been friends for a long ass time. Delilah, she's like my fucking BFF. And like I work with her and I met her um, at my job where I work at the coffee shop and i fucking love that bitch um if i have to answer this question look jocelyn doesn't watch my fucking vlogs fuck that bitch sometimes because i'd be trying to force her to watch my vlogs and that bitch would be like nah i'm tired so delilah watches my vlogs so Del therefore i will save delilah um how's my mom mm, okay my mom um i want to say she's okay She's all right. Um, I'm definitely like family wise. I'm. I'm. My family is going through it right now, uh, really hard, and so like, I want to say my mom's okay, but um, she's she's going through a tough time. Um, why don't you hit up your cousin Magali anymore, bitch? It's not that I don't want to hit you up, but like literally, my life is fucking crazy. I like. I swear to God, people don't believe me. Like, my life is hectic. Every day is like no two days are the same literally um but shit i don't got a car so come to the city swoop me up whenever the fuck you want i'm down to go to modesto ludfo or ludfo that's a question ludfo if y'all know who ludfo is i fuck with y'all that that motherfucker is lit um what inspired you to start vlogging and what do you want to gain from it uh 
So actually, um, I've been wanting to vlog since I was in high school, but I never like threw myself out there because I just didn't think people would watch my shit or that I was that entertaining and kind of thought my life was boring. Um, but what made me do it recently was my friends. My friends were just like, do it, bitch. Like, you're entertaining as fuck. I was like, I bet. So here I am. The craziest thing I've ever done fuck i feel like i've done a lot of crazy things that i've never really like put myself like out there to do this year alone i'm not this year sorry 2018 um the craziest thing i did fuck man all right okay this is this is probably one of the craziest thing i i've i've probably done and like don't do this like this is really bad i look like a hoodlum um this beanie y'all i swear to god this thing i did was me and my friend Delilah, we booked a trip. I'm really spontaneous, like really spontaneous. Like I'm that bitch who's usually down for like crazy shit all the time. So me and Delilah one day met up to have coffee, just to have coffee. And um, all of a sudden, like half an hour later, we found ourselves booking a trip to go to New York. We bought the tickets. We've got we got the Airbnb on the spot. And all of a sudden we we were planning to go to New York. So we go to New York. Um, have a blast uh we did not think it was gonna be like a blizzard out there when we went but it was it was fucking snowing like crazy we went to a restaurant the waiter like thought i was cute gave me his number um we became friends with him uh by the way delilah is underaged okay <laughs> she's not 21 and um so this waiter who who like we don't know decided to invite us to go out to the bar and i was like all right cool but uh my friend doesn't have an id and so i don't know how the fuck but he he got her into into the bar we got extremely fucked up i got hella fucked up like i don't know how we got back to the airbnb mind you it was only us two in this trip like that's so dangerous like and we were both drunk and she was underage and we just randomly went with this guy who we had never met before but um he's he turned out to be like he's a sweetheart he's a really nice person he was a really cool friend that we made out there in new york but that's probably like one of the craziest things i've done that i can remember right now okay that's it i'm taking off this fucking all right this is my hair right now done i just look, i just feel like like i look like a fucking hoodlum um you ever gave a motivational speech while you you was gas hurting no i have not i i have been i've attended people where i work at the cafe and like i gotta go pee hella bad but like i can't because i gotta take their order and like that hurts um that that's the closest thing to that and um okay let me see um if you were to travel anywhere right now for free where would it be italy 100 percent. so my major is my minor is italian and i can actually speak it um i've been taking it for like three years now um so i would love to go to italy and just practice my italian be like ciao come stai blah, 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 blah. you know that would be pretty dope um wish poppin someone just asked me that that's lit because i say that all the time do you regret breaking up with one of your exes um you know, up to this point in my life, no, I didn't. Reg I have never regretted breaking up with one of my exes. I do. If I had to pick one, yeah, there is one I regret breaking up with, and that was probably a mistake. But you know what? You never know what's gonna happen in life. Like, um, I could. I. I do regret one that that's that's the long story short i regret one he was um he was like my boyfriend my senior year of high school and um he was like one of the, like the best boyfriends i ever had to be honest but i just i felt like i lost feelings for him at one point in our relationship and i was graduating high school and um he was a year younger than me so he was still gonna be in like high school and like i i didn't know what like what i wanted to do in life or like i thought that it would hold me back in a way um so there's that one 
what was one of your worst relationships? Oh, all right. So, <laughs> fuck. So when I, I wouldn't say it was the okay. Well, it it was definitely like a really toxic relationship that I was in, and um, it was one of my longest relationships too. I was with him for like three to four years. Um, it. We had a lot of good times, but we also had a lot of bad times, a lot of arguments, um, a lot of put downs on me. And, you know, it was a relationship where, like, I, I just got tired of being put down all the time and being told that I kind of wasn't shit and I wasn't going to be shit without him. And, um,. I want to say we ended in good terms. I definitely have not talked to him. Um, be honest, like my life has been a lot emotionally. It's been a lot better without him just because I felt very insecure about myself with him. And I felt like I wasn't pretty enough with him. And I felt like I was never good enough for him. And getting out of that relationship really helped me like realize Hey, I'm the shit. I just have a bigger confidence now that I'm not with him. And it um, kind of sucks that that's how it was and how it turned out. But I learned from it. And, I'm, you know, here I am. Um, haven't dated any... That was, like, my last current relationship I was in. And I haven't dated anyone ever since. Um, it's going to be a year in February 14 that I've been single. Um, are you happy with with where you are in life? And if no, what would you change? Am I happy with where I am in life? No, I'm definitely not. Um, I did a lot of shit this year that I regret in my actions, like school-wise. I did a lot of things that I regret school-wise because I was supposed to do a lot more. And um, this should be my last semester in college and I can finally graduate um, if everything turns out okay. Um, I'm trying to be happier about it. For those who don't know, um, so I've suffered with depression, like, and anxiety my whole last life. Um, but this year specifically that just passed by was by far, like, one of the worst years I've ever had, um, with that because, you know, I spiraled out of control and I let myself fall. And, um, but I'm attempting and I think that's the change that I would want to do in my life to be happier. Like I'm attempting to change and do positive things for myself. Um, okay. What advice would you give for someone fighting depression, even though it doesn't show with their everyday routine? Like I said, no one knows that I suffer with depression and anxiety and you know, for those who, like, know me, um, I never show it. Like, I never show it that I am depressed. Um, but there's days where I wake up and I'm just, like, I can't do this anymore. And, um, not gonna lie, like, I, I definitely, um, I had really, um, I had really bad times, uh, this past year where, like, I just really wasn't happy with myself. I wasn't happy where I was in life. And, um, I did have a lot of things like happen that obviously caused me to feel that way about myself. I did not want to be here. I didn't see my worth and I didn't see why I should even be here. Um, and if you're feeling that way, it's not okay to think that you're not worth anything because you are. And if you think about it, there's a lot of people who care about you. And I am so grateful for all of my friends that really were around me when I needed them the most because without them I honestly don't think I would have ever made it through um you know I, I still am depressed but it wasn't as bad as like a like six months ago with you all right so I had to take a break um because I really want to respond to this question like in the best way possible and I'm not the most eloquent speaker um so one um i can have her chip in too because she's been in a position like that before oh, let me extend i have my selfie stick okay <laughs> okay um all right with me um i have 
I have battled with depression and anxiety, like, I, my whole life, like, from, I can remember, and a lot of people don't know that that was the case for me, but it was. Um, it was just never that serious. It was always very small and subliminal. It was never that serious where, like, I needed to get on antidepressants or whatever. Um, eventually, I did have to get on antidepressants because... A bitch was trying to kill themselves and I just couldn't handle life and I just didn't see the point of being in this world I didn't see the point of living I just wanted kind of like the easy way out and um, it got really bad I lost myself this year many times um, I went down a real bad spiral I just started drinking a lot um, every day actually like I was at the bar by myself sometimes just drinking like i was going through it um not to say that i'm i'm fully better now like i'm still going through it there's a lot of things that have happened in my personal life um as for those who don't know okay so this is what happened this past year um to give you like a quick recap um i had a boyfriend for four years and i broke up with him in the beginning of january of last year um, my family, I grew up in San Francisco, like, most of my life, and, uh, my family moved to Chicago, um, in the middle of the year, and I had to find, you know, how to, where to live, because I was not able to live where I was before, um, so that, like, really affected me, just having my whole family, like, completely moved to the East Coast, and just not having a boyfriend, and it went from, like, having people consistently there in my life to having no one and that was really hard on me because I don't know how to be by myself I I I get I got really sad and then um just got really out of hand I I was like a straight A student in college <laughs> I say was because I fucked up this year so bad um I have never failed a class in college and this year alone I failed three one of them I failed twice and that's not the type of person that I am. Like, I'm an overachiever to the fullest. Like, I needed to get straight A's. If I had, like, anything less than an A, like, I would fucking die. <laughs> um, but that was not the case this year. I, I lost a lot. Not I refer to this year, but I'm still thinking, like, we're in 2018. So just know that. And um, I just, I lost motivation. I didn't give a fuck about myself. I didn't give a fuck about my future and um i just felt completely alone and i felt like no one was going to help me so i've always had that attitude of if no one is going to help me therefore i need to help myself and i'm glad i've always had that attitude because even i knew that i was falling and i knew that i was you know getting really really depressed like i knew and i knew i was self destruct i'm a self destructive person like i knew i was getting there so um i just took it upon myself to be like i've come this far in life why would i throw my whole life away why would i expect so little of myself when i know i have a cap capability to be more in life and why am i going to let down so many people who love me because there's gonna there's people who love you okay like trust even if you think that there's not there is um i grew up in a family where like i didn't matter i grew up in a family where um there was substance abuse there was drug abuse um my mom was constantly working and um i pretty much raised myself so i know what it's like to feel alone and um I'm not alone now you build your own family like surround yourself with people who are gonna push you to do better surround yourself with people who care about you and it's though it's that group of people that you could rely on and it's that group of people who are gonna look in your best interests and push you to be better and push you to get out of that depressive mode because it's not worth being and it's not worth doing that to yourself it's really not um, and so I searched for help um, I searched for a therapist, um, I searched for a psychologist, uh, psychiatrist, psychi I can't even pronounce these things, psychiatrist? Psychiatrist. Psychiatrist and a psychologist that I started, like, seeing, um, on a regular basis because it was bad, <laughs> it was really bad, 
and um, I started taking antidepressants. Um, I'm not on them anymore because I don't feel that I need to be on them, but there was a point where like I really did need them and that was the only thing that was keeping me pretty much alive because if it wasn't for that um, pill, whatever, like, um, yeah, I would have been killed myself because I did try. And um, your side. How did you deal with depression this year? Well, this year, and I've been, I kind of been dealing with this since I was, like, a teenager. I kind of distanced myself from, like, all my friends and my family, and I would just be in my room and watch Netflix all the time. And that, in a way, well, that in a way made me feel better, because, like, I got to, like, connect with, like, a fake life. But, like, I started, like basically in a way like I felt like that fake life should be my life and I started it was really bad and I had to go to counseling for that and they were like I had to go to counseling every Wednesday that was my thing like mm -hmm. that every Wednesday was the time like I got to clear out all my like anger anything about my life and this this happened because my parents broke up and it really affected me super bad because it this shit was unexpected like, my parents had been together for 15 years it was just my my parents for the shit come <laughs> on like that's hard enough. and that fucked me up and then the other time like it's because this stupid bitch my dad's girlfriend like she just she kept calling me crazy and say like oh she needs to get on depression meds she gets on needs to get on depression meds and i'm just like i'm a little girl and i don't i don't know what this is like i don't know what that is mm -hmm. and for you for someone to tell me that that who doesn't even know me to get on meds is like what the fuck like who are you to tell me that which got me even more like upset with myself and my dad and my family which just made me like close off mm -hmm. and then like i got in a relationship she got in a relationship with the guy who was not good for her and like so we broke up whatever she cheated on me yeah no, and they didn't that break shit up. fucked they... me up like super bad i wasn't mm -hmm. going out i was just like I didn't even want to go to work. Like, I would go to work and cry. Like, like facts. I remember... She, this girl would show up to work in, like, overly sized gray, like, sweatsuit. Um, no... And, okay, when I met her, she would do her makeup every day. No matter what, we would go to work, and she always looked popping, like, dead ass. And then, uh, this guy just cheated on her, and she... It was like a Delilah I've never seen before. And it was so sad, because... She was really depressed for months. Like, she didn't want to go anywhere. She she was in her room all day. Sometimes she wouldn't even eat. Dude, um, I would. I lost 20 pounds mm -hmm. in seven days. That's how fucking bad it was. Yeah, I would wake really up in bad. the middle of the night and just think about him, not eat, and not even give a mm -hmm. fuck. Like, I would always be watching that stupid bitch's page. Sorry, language, I know. But I would just be checking up on her, like, to see... And by doing that, it affected me so much. Her self-esteem, yeah. like, went down. I just didn't a give a fuck about myself. Like, I was like, no one's ever going to find, like, I'm not going to find any love after this. Like, if he did this to me, like, even a better guy is going to do this to me. Until mm -hmm. I fucking found out that I'm cute. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That goes back to, like, you know, when I was in a relationship, so... My last relationship that I was just in was a toxic one, and it's the one I mentioned before. Um, it was a toxic one, and so when I finally got out of that relationship, I realized that I was so much better than that, and I'm a beautiful person, and I yes. didn't know that before. It sounds real stupid, but I didn't think of myself as, like, a cute person, someone, you know... And when I say beautiful, I mean it in, like, not just appearance-wise, but, like, personality-wise. Like, um, I just didn't know I was all that great. And I, I feel like I am now. No lie, after that relationship, like, she was a little sad for a bit. But she, this bitch, like, boop, out the nowhere, yeah. like, leather jackets y todo. And I was just like, <laughs> I, I started, know you know, girl. putting makeup on. Because yes. I, when I was in a relationship, I I, I stopped wearing makeup for a long time. Um, I never really seen her. Just her eyebrows, like, mm -hmm. light face, like, you know, natural. And uh, I wouldn't dress, like, cute or anything. Like, I would wear a lot of baggy shirts because yes. my boy, my ex-boyfriend was very, uh, like, I would say, like, 
really possessive and really overprotective and he didn't like it with when like guys would like look at me so there was points where like I would underdress myself or just hide certain parts of my body like you know don't show your ass don't show your boobs um because I didn't want to make him feel like he couldn't trust me or make him mad at a person that was looking at me or whatever so I would not try to look cute at, 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 at a certain point and so when I broke up with him it was like I was this whole other person um basically yeah basically and uh that was that but to be honest um if you really feel like no one can help you dm me like on some serious shit dm me you can call me we can have conversations like i completely understand where you're coming from i've been there um i've never really had anyone there for me my whole life um i didn't have like parents who i can count on uh i didn't really have that well like close friends that i felt that i could vent to because I did have close friends, but they were going through a lot thing, a lot of things as well, and I didn't want to bother people with my problems. But um, if you really need someone to talk to, like on some serious shit, DM me, and you know, yeah, I can know who you are too. If you don't want to do that, you can. Um, I'll figure something out where, like, you know, there's hotlines too, and I have the numbers for it saved on my phone because I'm still like going through it, you know. Oh, okay. and last one thing, mm -hmm. um, go to your friends, like, being Be friends. with the people that you love, like, mm -hmm. it gets you, that really it, helps. yes, like, that was, that's what helped me, like, just surround yourself around good mm -hmm. people that you love is always the best. Yeah, and on some, uh, like, dead ass, like, this bitch, <laughs> I'm with her so much because, like, she makes me happy, like, this, this is my friend, like, I really rely on her a lot, like, emotionally, it, like, and she does too, um, like but this is who i go to like when i'm not okay and it helps and like we help each other out um but yeah so next question was what advice would you give to someone whose partner is in love with them but they don't feel the same way um not because they don't love them but it's too soon to tell them um what this person is saying is that he loves his girlfriend but he's not in love with her yet but because he hasn't ma made that known um he thinks that she's rushing into being in love with him and because she hasn't communicate he hasn't communicated to her that um he's in love with her yet that her feelings are fading away okay um i went through this did you know with my ex, the one that fucked fuck me up, he, I, I take things really seriously and I did not want to say I love you yet. And mm -hmm. that was the whole thing between me and him. Like, do you love me or not? Like, and I was like, well, I don't want to say that yet because I'm not at that point mm -hmm. to know if I do or not. But I have so much feelings for you. I have love for you. I just don't know if I'm in love like that with you. And that was the thing that like just kept. Like, that was just the thing in our relationship. Do you love me or not? Do you love me or not? My first question would be, have you guys had a conversation where you discuss this? Like, where you let her know, like, I love you, but I'm not in love with you yet. I'm not ready for that part. First and most importantly, have that conversation with her and really make her understand that it's not that you don't love her. It's just you're not there yet. And if they can't wait or they're not willing to wait, then maybe that's not the right person for you and you should, Facts. you know, find someone who will understand your point of view because there's nothing wrong with being with someone who you love but you're not in love with yet. You just yes. need to be able to understand where they're coming from and give that person time and it will slowly get there. Yeah. If she falls in love with you and she's in love with you, that's great, you know? that we would all want that we all want someone to love us um but make her make her feel important and make her feel that her feelings are valid and um you'll get there and you you know you care about how you love her i would say just communicate with her and from that point on see how she feels um if she's okay with you not being there yet if she's not okay with you not being there yet 
that's not who you should be with then um Cut the cord that's how that's what i think you know i may be wrong i might i don't want to fuck up your relationship but communicate with that with her you know oh and don't hold us liable yeah don't please please like <laughs> this is this is just like our experience like from what we know and like we're just letting i'm conveying like this is what i that's what i would do if i was in your situation to be honest that's what i would do um okay so second one so my girlfriend does everything for her family which is fine it's expected mm -hmm. but sometimes i get really mad at her because she doesn't voice her thoughts her sisters ask her to do something she'll jump right to it no matter what but if she asks them to do something the simplest favor um all of a sudden they don't know they don't know how to reply to her message or they don't reply to her um like answer her calls and um she's always vented to me about it and i get so mad because i tell her like why don't you say anything and she won't even acknowledge it with them my girlfriend is basically their uber driver without the pay they don't even bother to even ask if she needs gas money or if she's tired or not she gets late from work she gets off late from work and then they'll ask her to run errands for them then expect her to wake up early the, the next day to run some more errands um she gets mad and it makes me furious that she she ain't got a backbone to address the issue okay um this is crazy because i'm in a similar situation with my family like that um i am my family's everything i'm that person who will run the errands i'm like their fucking assistant um they depend on me financially and you know they're i understand so i come from like a real like I got your back kind of family um and family means everything to me uh like straight up and i know that there's there's a line between like helping your family which is fine like you can help them and that's really understandable but they should not be taking advantage over you um because she may not have the the courage to say anything right now but it's gonna build up trust me it's gonna build up because I'm literally in the same position and um, I just went to visit my family in Chicago and uh, tension built up and I exploded and um, I got tired of my parents using me like a fucking bank account um, and like I got tired of being used by them and them not appreciating me and not even taking into consideration everything that I've done for them because it is stressful. It is so stressful and that was one of the biggest triggers that led me to be depressed was my family because they just expected so much from me um, and I they put all this responsibility on me that was not fair because I'm only 22 by the way I'm 22 tw turning 23 this year but I'm only 22 and like I go to school full time. I have two jobs, an extra job on the side, three so three jobs. Um and um at the same time, like I am paying for a lot of things for my family in Chicago because you know, they need assistance and um I'm also handling a lot of their um you know, things that they don't know because my my parents don't speak Spanish, uh English that well and I handle all of that for them. I do all of the things that an adult would do, but their kid is doing it for them, if that makes sense. So, like, I completely understand where you're coming from. And um, I, I was pretty scared to talk to my parents. I was really scared to even address the issue as well. Um, they've um, It took me a really long time, a lot of years, for me to finally, like, stand my ground and say this is not okay what you guys are doing uh because it's not fair to me it took a lot of courage but i finally built the courage to say something after i felt like all right you know i can't do this anymore like i got depressed over this i lost myself because of this huge stressor and um i mean i'm still going through it you know but I'm learning to prioritize myself and that's what I did like prioritize yourself 
and she's gonna come to a breaking point where she's gonna have to say something to her parents or her family um and if they take it the good way then great if they don't then that's a loss for example i'm not talking to my dad at the moment because i didn't end in good terms when i finally stood my ground but that was because he loves having control over me and uh if he doesn't have control over me or my actions or what i do then uh he gets pissed off but um yeah that was deep I really Hello. loved it. Even though it wasn't I don't know if I answered your question though. Um, she's gonna get there. She'll build the courage. And if she doesn't, then you, as her boyfriend, need to keep pushing her. Hey, this is not okay. Or if she doesn't feel that she can voice herself, fuck it. Stand up for her and be like, I'm so sorry. And if, I'm so sorry if it comes off disrespectful. But this is my girlfriend, and I'm going to stand by her, and y'all need to treat her better, you know? If it gets to a point where you feel like she's not going to do anything about it, I say, fuck it, stand up and do it for her. Because sometimes people need someone to um, just do that for them because they don't feel that they could do it. Uh, for me, what worked, what worked for me, like, actually stand up to my parents was my uncles and my friends consistently telling me over and over again Gwen like this is not okay Gwen you can't keep doing this for your family Gwen you can't bend yourself and over backwards for them because they don't do that for me and uh that's where I'm at now say that again what's the coolest thing you've ever owned <laughs> well Honestly, okay, the coolest thing I've ever owned is a house. Like, so I bought a house last year, and I'm pretty fucking juiced that I was able to buy a house. Like, that shit was crazy to me. Um, but I bought, a I bought a house for my parents because they don't have... So my parents are undocumented, um, and they obviously don't have the means to, like, you know, live in a house. And it's always been my mom's dream to, like, have her own house, have her own kitchen, and... I was like, all right, fuck it. So I bought her a house in Chicago so she could be close to her brother and her sister. And that was the coolest thing I've ever owned. I still own, hopefully, if I can make my mortgage payments because, you know, my parents are broke and they're, I'm broke. And that's the one, another huge stressor in my life is knowing whether I can keep this house or not. Um, I always get scared to mention that I own a house because it's like, you know, you say it and then that I could lose my house, you know, and all of a sudden I don't have a house. So I get scared to say that I do have a house because then I also feel like I get bad luck when I mention things <laughs> in social media because <laughs> I've already had a horrible year. Like, I don't need another one. Um, like, I really don't. Like, I really need, like, something good to happen in my life because it's just one thing after another and after another. And I feel like I'm going to go nuts if something else goes wrong in my life. Facts. Um, but there was... Okay, this is the other question that I wanted your input into. Is what would you do if someone that you're feeling has a girlfriend but is talking to you? Don't talk to them because that that's messy as fuck like it's just one of those situations where like I've been before and it kind of sucks because that's not a situation you want to be stuck in like you don't want to have feelings for someone who is taken by somebody else because that's not okay and um you know I removed from myself from a situation very similar to that because I didn't think it was fair for me or for the other person or for the you know the girlfriend of that guy and um what I did was I just told the girl straight up hey your boyfriend is cheating on you and he's talking to me and I stopped talking to him and that's kind of what I did oh cut it off dude this that's so fucking okay i get it like you feel like mm -hmm. you feel cool at first like oh like this fool is 
you know, he has a girl, but he's talking to me like he's trying to give me attention. And it's like, yeah. I've been in this fucking situation. <laughs> I feel like we all have because I, I was just in a situation like this not that long ago. There's clearly something going on between their relationship that's, that's lacking and that they're trying to get mm-hmm. it from, you know, you Another or me. Another person. The other person. And... No, and it's dude. not fair. It's not cut fair to it either. Off. I, and I, I cut mine off. It was super hard to because I, like, I had a thing for them, like, how long ago when we were little. Mm-hmm. And it... No, like, once you cut it off, like, you could always, you're better without without them. Honestly, yeah, that's, like, the biggest lesson in life I've ever learned is, um, you are better than what you think you are, and yes. no matter who the fuck you find, you're, you can find someone better. If they're not treating you right, find someone better. If they're making you doubt yourself, if they're yes. making you feel insecure in any little way possible they're not for you degrading you calling you perra don't ever let a guy disrespect (laughs) you because i've been there before too like and the also the thing is when they fucking tell you like you're nothing without me like i'm the best that you you're gonna ever have the worst feeling cut it off Mm -hmm. (laughs) cut it off like it's not true you mm-hmm. are totally better than them. No, They're yeah. clearly insecure about themselves to make to put that thing on you. Mm-hmm. To make you feel insecure about yourself. Basically, I'm insecure and I'm trying to make her insecure. That's what they're trying yeah, to do. Yeah, and that no, that's called being manipulative too because they find a way to like turn around everything and make you feel like you fucked up and you're the guilty one and it's your fault. And um, unfortunately, it took me 4 years to get out of a relationship like that. But once I got out, like, I was able to see how stupid I was to be in a relationship like that. And how I didn't deserve that. And when I got out of that fucking sticky-ass situation, yeah. I was cool. Like, I was sad a little bit. Yeah, okay. But then mm-hmm. after I was like, all right, what are Bounce we gonna next. do next? <laughs> A-okay. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. I have something for you. What would you do with the guy who that you liked? Uh-huh. You liked him so much, blah, blah, blah. But they had a kid. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, what would I do if I liked someone a lot? Yeah. But they had a kid. Yeah. Well, he has to be treating me right first. <laughs> um, I honestly don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, like, to, you know, to date or want someone who, who you really, like, <laughs> want or whatever, but has a kid. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but for me personally, I just don't think I would be able to do that because I came from a fucked up family, all right? Like, I just want to have a family of my own, if that makes sense. And nothing against people who, like, you know, have a kid or whatever. I should probably phrase this in a better way because I don't, it's not for me. But if that's your thing, I'm all for it. I don't judge. I'm, like, the least person to judge because, trust, shit happens in life. Who knows? Maybe I will fall in love with someone who has a kid. But to to be honest, it's, like, they have to treat me right because I'm I'm not settling for less than that. Like, you have to respect me, like, love me, be loyal, don't lie to me, and treat me right. Because, uh, yeah, guys are liars. For, for, I mean, at least the ones that I've been with, they're fucking liars. I'm the same 100%. Boat, girl. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of fun to, like, do that whole Q&A, whatever. Thank you for um, being on here. I maybe mean. I'll have some fucking, like, cheese my Fridays. I don't know. That would yes. be lit. <laughs> like, let me tell y'all what happened this week type of shit. Um, but, yeah, that was lit. All right, well, a okay, a okay. I need to come up with the intro, Clean but up for right now, a okay. But why is your tongue purple? <laughs> what, what the fuck Green did you eat? A yeah, Smurf? Green <laughs> this bitch. Bye. Bye.